Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Dario from PC Crazy YouTube channel and today we're going to talk about how to build your PC. Now since the prices of the graphic cards are quite insane unfortunately, nevertheless we're going to talk about how to build it and show you step by step uh, how to choose the right components and exactly how to place everything inside the case. So first of all, let's start with the introduction of the parts. Of course, uh, we have loads of parts right here and even though you could uh, go and choose to your certain budget, uh, unfortunately, as I said, the prices of the graphic cards are way above the MSRP. So today we're just going to build a PC and not stick to the price range. So let's start. First of all, we have here the new Intel motherboard. This is the ASRock Z590 Extreme motherboard for 10th and 11th generation of Intel Core processors. Uh, to pair it up with a nice CPU that will definitely uh, work really nice in a gaming build or a streaming build or an editing build is going to be a 8 core 16 thread uh, Intel Core uh, i7-10700K which is going to be quite nice and will have really nice performance, nice temperatures and still do a good job. Uh, usually with the processors you get uh, coolers, uh, stock coolers, which are basically quite enough for, uh, let's say, a low range processors. But today we're going to go with an aftermarket CPU tower cooler and we chose uh, Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black. Now, when choosing a CPU tower cooler, you do need to take into consideration the height and of course the RAM clearance and the top fan clearance and of course the uh, CPU tower clearance from the motherboard to the side panel. So for instance the Noctua NHD15 uh, Chromax Black has total height of 165 millimeters while the case that we chose for today the uh, Antec P10 Flux has 170 millimeters of height distance from the motherboard to the side panel. So you have five millimeters of extra space, which is quite enough to do everything that you need. Now, since we covered the motherboard CPU and the CPU tower cooler, let's check out the RAMs and the SSD that we chose for this build. Right here, we have the uh, team group T-Force Z Alpha uh, four sticks. So four times eight gigabytes on 36 100 megahertz usually for gaming a sweet spot is 16 gigabytes but we decided to fill out all the slots on the motherboard just for the looks and if you decide to go with some photoshopping and editing videos 32 gigs with everything that you decide to go is more than enough and i would say some sort of a future proof so this is a good choice to go with and 3600 megahertz is quite a right speed the sweet spot for something would be 3200 megahertz but we decided to go with 36 and push it up a bit just to give more room for future now when it comes to storage you can always go with additional hard drive but uh, to lose all the wires that you usually have to cable manage and to do nice organization inside your build we would suggest that you go with the M.2 SSD. Now, here we have the team group T Force Cardea IOPS. This is M.2 NVMe uh, PCI Express Gen 3x4 SSD with 1 terabyte of storage. Uh, this one actually has a passive heatsink, so it has additional cooling to, I would say, stop thermal throttling if it happens with the long process of uh, load and constant increase of temperature. This keeps it cool and no thermal throttling. But not only that, this one has uh, ultra IOPS, uh, really gives an outstanding performance and you'll be really satisfied with this one. In addition to this, you can always go with some two terabytes uh, hard drive just if you need some extra storage for your 
I don't know, photos, videos, or editing material that you use uh, if you do some editing, Photoshop, or video edit. Now, graphic card. Uh, graphic card, as I stated at the beginning of the video, it's either quite hard to acquire one or the prices are really uh, steep, but uh, nevertheless, we're going to use the MSI RTX GeForce RTX 2070 armor which is still a solid graphic card even though it's two generations at the back because after that you have the super version and the rtx 3070 so this one will still do quite nice in 1440p gaming on medium uh, details and still give you a nice uh, boost when it comes to fps and everything else this graphic card has six and eight pin connector and Apart from the new graphic card that need separated uh, PCI Express uh, connectors from the power supply, this one doesn't. You can go with the power supply that has daisy chained power supply connectors for your graphic card, so you need only one cable. Speaking of power supply and cables, we chose, even though it is a bit too much for this build, 850 watts. I wanted to go with Fractal Design Eon Gold 850 watts fully modular power supply just to show you uh, if you decide to go with a, something easier for you to cable manage you can go with this power supply. Uh, the thing is it has 650, 750 and 850 so you can choose whatever you wish but uh, the cable management is quite easy because you only use cables that you actually need inside the build. So for instance you use the 24 pin for this one and you use the EPS cables that you need at the top. You don't need SATA cables unless you have some sort of a controller and you don't need them because you're using M.2 SSD not 2.5 inch one and you only use one PCI Express uh, cable for your graphic card since you have two connectors at the end. And finally, we're going to use the Antec P10 Flux case, which will be quite nice uh, all in all, just because it's it has, let's say, two-in-one silence and performance. It has already pre-installed fans, so you need to take into consideration that as well. You don't have to buy extra fans at all. This case comes with three fans at the front, one at the back, and this is some sort of a, I would say, already pre-installed airflow uh, configuration. So basically, that's all there is to it when it comes to components. Let's dive in into building. So first we will start by removing the motherboard from the box and add all the components we can on before placing it inside the case. Uh, Take the processor out of the box and follow uh, these instructions. So you can see clearly here that this is the processor socket. So first of all, you need to remove the ledge, push it towards you and then upwards. So you could uh, basically get a clear access to the processor socket. Now place the processor according to the pins. As you can see on the bottom left and right side, it can fit perfectly inside the processor socket on the motherboard. Uh, and when it does, you placed the processor inside correctly. Be careful because you might uh, bend the pins on the motherboard and then uh, everything might not work. So very carefully place the processor on the socket then leave the plastic uh, top cover on the latch, place the latch at the bottom and close it. When you close it, the plastic top will pop out and then just store it in your motherboard box because if something goes wrong with the motherboard, this is how you get the warranty replacement. And this is what actually protects the pins when the motherboard is inside the box. Uh, since uh, on this motherboard you have a passive heatsink, we will remove it since the Team Group T-Force Cardea IOPS has one of its own. Uh, untightening the screws holding the passive heatsink and place the NVMe SSD according to the pins on the motherboard M.2 socket. Then place uh, the SSD according to the socket that you have on the motherboard and you'll see that it basically uh, fits right inside that slot. Uh, when the SSD is in place, uh, the other side will 
perfectly fit so you can tighten the screw uh, and basically hold SSD in mount for secure placement. Next is the RAM placement. Uh, be sure to check where the cutout on the RAM connector is and where it's supposed to go inside the motherboard. Release the top and bottom or just the top latches depending on the motherboard because they hold the RAMs and if they're in closed position you can't place the RAMs inside the motherboard. So usually RAMs have that sticker with uh, information which kind of memory they are so usually it goes uh, rotated towards the processor but always check out the pin layout on the motherboard and on the rams and how to place it when you place the rams inside the latches both top and bottom or like we have in this example only top ones will get back in the standard position and lock the rams in place now it's time to place the cooler, but before we do that, you need to place the backplate uh, at the back of the motherboard and then a pea sized amount of thermal grease or paste on the processor just in the middle of it. When you place the backplate, you also need to put uh, standoffs, uh, locking nuts, mounting screws and everything else so that the cooler can actually fit. Since every processor uh, tower cooler has a different way of placing the mounting brackets on the motherboard, please refer basically to the manual of the CPU tower cooler uh, because they have all the instructions on how to place it. Today we're just going to use the Noctua NHD15 uh, Chromax uh, Black which uh, is in this video for an example. After connecting everything and placing uh, the fan on the CPU heatsink, CPU tower heatsink, uh, you connect the PWM header to your CPU fan header on the motherboard. Now it's time to place the motherboard inside the case. Uh, check uh, if your case has all the standoffs for motherboard mounting. Uh, they usually have all nine, but sometimes uh, the standoffs are for micro ATX motherboard. So check out if you have all the nine and then place the motherboard inside. The best way to place the motherboard uh, inside your case is to lay down the case. Then first check if you have the IO shield that needs to go inside the case where the connectivity ports on the mother motherboard are at the back. If the IO shield is already attached to the motherboard, then just keep on going. Gently place the motherboard inside by checking out the standoffs and if they match with the holes in the motherboard, as well as aiming to get a perfect fit with the IO shield at the back side of the case. Place and tighten all eight screws or nine, depending on the case. Middle one sometimes can be just a holder to center the motherboard inside the case, which is kind of cool feature. Uh, in this situation, we're using two 8-pin EPS cables that go on the top left corner of the motherboard. One is 24-pin cable that goes in the middle right part of the motherboard. And for the graphic card, we will use one 6-pin and one 8-pin PCI Express cable. You also need one SATA power cable for your controller at the back. So connect all these cables to your power supply if you have a modular one. Or if you have a non-modular one, then you already have all the cables. Just rearrange them nicely uh, with those that you don't need and those that you need. Separate them and that way you will easily do cable management later on. First, connect the two 8-pin EPS cables since they're a bit above. Depending on the case, sometimes you'll have enough space. Sometimes you'll need to fiddle a bit to uh, connect them at the back and of course connect the 24 pin cable on the motherboard. Uh, now connect the uh, USB 3.0 front panel to the motherboard audio header front button headers for powering on your computer and USB 2.0 if it has as well as some other headers that are on the front like Type-C or stuff like that. This way you'll have an easy connection to the motherboard and the graphic card won't get in the way of connecting everything. Time to place the graphic card. Check how the graphic card will be placed inside uh, with the first PCI slot and then you'll realize how many PCI Express covers you need to remove in order to place the graphic card. In this situation we will have to remove the second and the third one from the top. Uh, release the latch that holds the graphic card to the motherboard and gently align the graphic card to the PCI slot and PCI brackets. 
that will additionally hold it in place. Uh, now when you place the graphic card, the latch that you pushed back will come forward and hold the graphic card but not firmly enough since you do need to tighten two screws at the back of the case which will hold the graphic card in straight position. In case there is a slight GPU sag, uh, we would suggest uh, acquiring an anti-sag bracket or anything similar to that, just to have a straight line of the graphic card. First, it will look nicely, and secondly, it won't add extra weight to your PCI Express slot. Now, connect uh, the 6-pin and 8-pin EPS to your graphic card in the position so that the latch on the cables attaches to the pins on the graphic card which will hold the cable. When all of this is done one more time check all the cable connectivity and if the cables are properly in place without any movements inside the connectors arrange the cables at the back with zip ties or velcro ties and close the back panel of the case. Connect the power cable from the wall socket to your power supply and switch it on. Press the power button on the case and there you go. So basically what is left for you to do is press the power on button, you get an initial start, initial blow of the fans which lowers down after a few seconds and then you'll need to install your operational system, for instance Windows 10 or well basically that is if you're aiming for gaming and then you'll have to download from the official website of the motherboard audio chipset drivers, audio drivers, LAN drivers and everything else that you might have eventually update BIOS and then go to the NVIDIA official uh, website or if you're using an AMD Radeon card go to the AMD Radeon to do download their official latest drivers so the graphic card can be used in full to get maximum FPS. So guys, this is it. Now you can download your games, now you can download your applications, edit, stream, game or whatever you want to do with your PC. That's all there is to it. So thank you for watching today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and hope that this tutorial helped you a lot while building your first gaming PC or your FPS PC or anti-RGB uh, gaming PC. Don't forget to check the links below for Team Group T-Force uh, Cardia IOPS M.2 SSD, of course T-Force Z Alpha uh, RAMs and Team Group website. Thank you for watching and see you in another one. Bye bye.